the flip is up guys, it's your girl Brittany Nicole and this is my life through a camera lens. And I think to myself, what a wonderful What a wonderful Thank you guys so much for clicking on today's video. It is that time of year again, and if you did not see my video from last year and you're needing a little bit of inspiration for a first birthday party for your little girl, I will be sure to link that video right here for you guys if y'all wanna check it out. In that video, I went through and explained every little detail that I did in planning my daughter's first birthday party. But with that being said, we just celebrated my daughter's second birthday party a few weeks ago. So I figured I would share everything that I did to plan that birthday party as well. I'm going to break down every little thing that I did in regards to this party, from the theme to the idea ideas that I had to the decor pieces that I used, all the activities that we did for the party, all the way down to the cake, what I asked for specifically, and how all that turned out. So if you're curious on how I made this party happen, stay tuned. I made the mistake of saying this exact thing a million and one times in my last video, and I don't wanna drive y'all nuts by repeating myself constantly. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it out here. Everything that I mentioned will be linked down in the description box below. Everything that I purchased for the party that is on Amazon, you will find in my Amazon storefront, which is linked down below, and then everything else that I purchased from Walmart, Target, Etsy, all of that will be linked below. So if you're curious about what I bought, it's all down there. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me, and I will answer any and everything that I can. So I have a few things working against me right now. One it's like 90 degrees so I'm just sweating to death but my daughter is currently napping so I don't want to go inside and wake her up the second issue that I'm running into is that I've been charging my camera all morning so I thought and we are currently on 11% battery so we're gonna shoot as much as we can hopefully I can get it done I doubt it, but we'll see. To kick this bad boy off, I am a very visual person. I am all about plans and lists. It's my thing. So the Notes app was a huge lifesaver for me when it came to this party. When I say I used my Notes app and made a list for everything in regards to this party, I mean everything. I made an invite list, so I put every single person that I invited to the party, and then I went back and I would mark off every person that RSVP'd to the party, which helped me when I started to plan the food for the party, so that gave me a rough estimate of how much food that I needed. Now, obviously life happens and some people that said that they were gonna make it to the party ended up having to cancel day of and that's just the sort of stuff that you can't really plan for but this way with making the list I at least had a general idea of how many people would be there and how much food I needed because the last thing that you want is running out of food or drinks at said party then I made a separate list of everything else from the schedule that I wanted to happen for the party which I'll go over that in just a minute to the types of decorations that I wanted the ideas that I had for the party birthday gift ideas that I wanted to get you name it it was on the list if I could give you any advice at all, it would be to make a list of some sort to help you keep things organized. So for me, I started planning my daughter's birthday party about three to four months in advance. So I would purchase things for the party and then later on completely forget about that purchase. So with having a list, everything that I purchased, as I purchased it, I would mark it off on the list that I could see that I had already made that purchase. And that way I wouldn't go back later on down the line and order said thing again. We're trying to save money here, okay? Not waste it. <laughs> all right, the schedule. So I did the same thing for the schedule for the party this year as I did last year for my daughter's first birthday party. Since my daughter is still napping once a day, I wanted to revolve her birthday party schedule around her nap schedule. I really wanted to ensure that she would be in a good mood and not tired and cranky throughout her whole party. I'll share the exact schedule that I use just to give you an idea of what we did. But again, do it based off of what works best for you and your family. Scheduling her party was very difficult because I kept trying to accommodate every single person that was coming to the party and that's just completely unrealistic. And finally, it just got to a point where I couldn't make everyone happy. So I finally just said, you know what? I'm gonna do what works best for myself and Charlie. And if people could make it, they could make it. And if they couldn't, then, you know, that was okay too. You can't please everyone. So my advice is don't try to. <laughs> Sorry the lighting keeps changing. The sun is going in and out of the clouds. So it's just like getting super bright and then not my bad. Like I said, I made a huge list. So I'm gonna read the schedule for you guys. So the schedule that we had planned was the party was gonna be from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I just wrote down that everyone would arrive slash eat slash play activities from two to three and then we would open presents from 3 to 3 15 and then we do the cake at 3 30 and then everyone would mingle between 4 to 5 and then head out obviously if things didn't go exactly according to plan that was not a big deal I just wanted a rough outline of how I wanted the day to go that way during the party I wasn't like oh my gosh what do we do next what do I what do I do with my hands I could look at the time and someone would be like all right what are we doing now I could be like this and we go straight to it I also bumped everything up like the cake and presents because we actually had a photographer come out this year and she had to leave the party no later than 4 p.m. So there was a lot of things that I wanted her to photograph that I wanted to make sure that we did obviously before she left. Okay, I'm sorry if it's changed up a little bit. We took a little study break. I had to let my camera charge a little bit.
bit. Now we're back. Again, like I said earlier, I repeat myself a lot. If you watched my video last year, you will know that I had a very difficult time coming up with the theme for my daughter's first birthday party. I don't know why I put so much pressure on myself to throw the perfect first birthday party last year. It's a bit ridiculous if you ask me now that I think back to it. Planning the party in general was different in a lot of ways this year compared to last year, but coming up with the theme was probably the easiest thing that I did. Mainly because my daughter is now old enough to have her own likes and interests, whereas last year she didn't. So it was kind of all just on me to come up with what I wanted for her first birthday. But this year she has her own like favorite things that she loves now. So at the time of the party and still currently, she is completely obsessed with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So I've known for a very long time that I wanted to throw her a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse theme party. But from there it was very simple. I just had to try and find things that I liked that went along with the party theme. My first big tip for you in this sense was a lesson that I learned the hard way and that is to use Etsy and Amazon to your advantage. Last year I found the theme based off of a picture that I saw on Pinterest and I kind of had to do everything from scratch. I did all of the DIY projects by myself just to kind of make it go along with the theme. I don't know why I never thought to check Etsy to the extent that I did this year last year because I found so much stuff on Etsy that was not only affordable, but also went along with the theme perfectly. Go on Etsy, search the theme that you're looking for, and buckle up because I'm sure you will find a million and one things. The next thing I'll discuss with you guys is the color scheme because I originally wanted to go the complete opposite direction of everything Mickey Mouse related. And what I mean by that is I didn't want to use the typical red, black, and yellow, and white color scheme palette. I wanted to go for the more girly neutral vibe. with lots of earthy tones with hints of muted pinks and creams everywhere maybe like a hint of greenery you know my daughter loves everything Mickey Mouse Clubhouse so what's the point in throwing her a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse theme party if I'm not going to make it look like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse you know what I mean I don't know I mainly wanted to go for that muted natural neutral color vibe up until I started planning the cake I want to skip ahead just to something really quickly and then we'll come back to that I wanted to really quickly touch on the invitation card that I made because like I've stated before, Pinterest is my number one inspiration when planning birthday parties. And while searching for ideas on Pinterest, I came across this woman's blog, which was in regards to her son's Mickey Mouse themed birthday party that she threw. I absolutely loved some of the stuff that she had at her party. And I wanted to try and incorporate it into my daughter's birthday party as well. And one of the things that I really loved and I wanted to incorporate was the invitation card that she had at hers and some of the name tags tags that she had throughout the party as well. I want to say if I remember correctly that she actually paid someone else to make the invitation card and those extra cards throughout the party, but I didn't want to pay someone else to do that because I felt like it's something that I could do myself. I have all of the means to do it myself, so I figured it was just an easy way for me to save money. I just used the app called Studio on my phone to create the invitation cards, then to create the cards for the foods and other cards that you'll see throughout the party as well. I just used Adobe Premiere, which is a program that I personally pay for to make my YouTube videos and stuff like that and like Photoshop and if you're really interested on exactly how I made all of these I can do a completely separate video on that and break down exactly what I did step by step on how to do that now moving on to activities that we did for the kids first activity being a bounce house I was adamant about getting a bounce house for my daughter anything jumping in general this child absolutely loves so I thought that it would not only be something fun for her to do but it would also be something fun for the other kids to do while they were at the party her first birthday party was obviously slightly different because she wasn't even walking at that point so entertaining her wasn't really an issue whereas this year a lot of the kids were also a lot older too so them just sitting around in a circle chit-chatting with the adults probably wasn't the most fun thing that they could think of doing and I can definitely say it was a huge hit I got a little bougie with it and at first wanted an all-white bounce house everybody thought I was crazy I thought it would be aesthetically pleasing I don't know it's just I wanted it, but I quickly realized that that was way outside of my budget. I just wasn't okay with spending four, five, six hundred dollars on a bounce house that I was only going to be able to rent for a couple hours for this party. Not to mention a lot of those types of places that have the more specific ones were very far away from where the party was being located. We are out in the middle of nowhere, so it just wasn't feasible. But I found an awesome company. I'll link them down here for you guys. That is actually in the city that we are in. Their prices were so reasonable. They brought the bounce house the day before the party 
party, left it all throughout the party, and then didn't come and pick it up until the day after the party. So we got to use the bounce house a ton. Like Charlie was able to use it for a really long time. So it definitely felt like money well spent. And it was still way, way, way under my budget. I will say that one idea that I had that I'm really glad that I went through with was taking our outdoor patio set over to where the bounce house was. I know for me, whenever Charlie has ever played in a bounce house, I like to stand right there and watch her to make sure she's okay. Maybe I'm just the hover mom. I just don't like to stray too far away. So I thought that other parents might also want to stay close to the bounce house while their kids were in there. And who wants to stand out by a bounce house in the sun, in the scorching heat, watching your kids bounce all day? Not me. So I took the outdoor patio set and set it up over there by the bounce house in the shade like under a tree and I wanted it to feel all cozy and warm and welcoming so we took our rug out there, we took the fire pit out there and a couple decorations just to make it feel more inviting. That way if the guests wanted to they had a place to sit that was closer to the bounce house so they could watch their kids. So this next activity that I did is probably my favorite thing that we did and I am so glad that I went through with it. I'm sure a lot of people thought I was crazy and was probably just wasting money but it was money well spent and it was to have a painting section at the party. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it was something that I thought none of the kids would really use and I was really scared that it wasn't gonna be much of a hit, but it actually turned out to be such a huge hit with all the kids. What gave me the idea for this is my daughter absolutely loves painting. It's just her thing. She has her own little easel. We come outside on the back patio and we paint constantly. We have done this for a very long time. It's just her favorite thing in the world to do, drawing and painting. She loves it. So I bought this painting set off of Amazon for a couple bucks. It came with tons of little tools and sponges, different sizes and shapes. And then I found a 12 pack of aprons off of Amazon. And all I did was I took the aprons and I went to the dollar store and I bought little command hooks. And as you can tell in this photo, which is where we put the painting section, I just put the command hooks by the window and kind of spread them out. And then I just took the aprons and put the aprons on the command hooks. That way, as the kids came up and wanted to paint, they could grab an apron throw it on when they were done, just put it up out of the way. Which brings me to my next item that I bought for the painting section. You guessed it paint. So I bought this pack of paint at Walmart that had all the primary colors that you can think of that you'd want and need. And it was a lot cheaper to buy in a set rather than buying individual paint. Well, my dumb self bought acrylic paint and not washable paint. So my biggest tip there for you guys is to make sure that you buy washable paint. Luckily, we didn't have any spills or messes that were too dire, but I feel like it was a lot more of a hassle for the parents to clean their kids up rather than having the washable paint. We didn't realize that it wasn't washable until the day of when I was setting up the paint section. I wanted to cry. First time mom over here. <laughs> Something I wish I would have done at the party was set up a little cleaning station for the parents and the kids that was close by the paint section. Not that it was too much of a hassle, but every time the kids would get done and need to be cleaned up, they'd have to go inside to the sink, get all cleaned up, and of course, kids being kids, as soon as their parents clean them off, they bring them back outside and then they'd wanna paint again. I will say the acrylic paint did come off pretty easy on the skin, but not as easy as children's washable paint would have. And then I bought some easels. I found these easels at Target in the little dollar section for $5 a piece. So I just bought three of them. I thought they were so stinking cute. And then to go with the easels, I actually bought canvases. I found a pack that were the thin kind at Walmart. Again, very inexpensive. And I wanted to get canvases instead of just regular paper because I personally like to keep all of the stuff that Charlie paints and I will display it on her bedroom wall or in the playroom. So I thought that it would be sweet if the kids could paint on the canvas and then we would let it dry throughout the party when they were done and then they could take it home with them and display it at their house if they wanted to. So even though I purchased that paint set off of Amazon, I went and also purchased a couple packs of like regular paintbrushes from the dollar store. They were just cheap little paintbrushes that I got for the kids so that they could each have their own regular paintbrushes. As you can see in this photo, I had one large paint station and I set up three different canvases that each had their own cup of water, their own little paint palette, their own easels, and then their own canvases. And then at Walmart, I found a pack of like really tiny palettes. I laid out the palettes. I went ahead and put all the different color paints on said palettes. And we were just keeping an eye on the station. Once a kid left, we would then go and just kind of reset up the station again. And as far as the setup for the painting station, I didn't go out and buy anything for that. For the patio set that I spoke about earlier that I put out by the bounce house, that had two extra square seats. Those are actually the ones that are right behind me right here. I just put both of those up against the wall where the window was and then I took a regular fold-out table put that on top and covered it with a white sheet and called it a day and the last 
last activity that we had at the party was cornhole. This obviously didn't have anything to do with the children, but I wanted the adults to have something to occupy them if they were wanting to do something. I didn't go out and buy them. My brother and my dad each have their own set. So I just set up the cornhole boards that was close by where the bounce house was so adults were able to go out there and play if they wanted to. Moving on to the decor pieces, kind of the fun part. I will go through and break down all of the decor pieces that I made and then also the ones that I purchased for the party as well. Just in case you're interested in doing the same and then I'll go and I'll discuss all of the food that I used for the party and like the decor pieces that go along with the food. Bear with me, it'll make sense in a minute. So the first decor piece is the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse sign that we put at the gate to kind of like show everyone where the party was. I saw this sign on Pinterest and fell in love with it. And if you watch again my previous video from last year, you'll know that Danny made our fairies only sign. So I knew that I could have him make this sign for me easily as well. But the only thing that I really needed to purchase to make this sign was I went to the dollar store and I bought some black foam board and then some white foam board. That was it. We had black paint and paint brushes that he used to paint the letterings on the sign and then he just used a piece of wood that we had here around the house to staple the sign onto. But the thing that I'm so sad about is that's the one thing that we did not get a photo of. When the photographer got here early for the party, she took pictures of all of the decor pieces before, you know, there was kids running around and people were like messing with it. My brother was finishing up putting the sign on said piece of wood and then during the party, it actually started raining like halfway through the party. So by the time that the party was over, the sign was completely destroyed and like all bent over and the foam board was all wet and mushed over. But it looks just like this. Danny did an awesome job and made it look very, very, very similar to this picture right here that I gave him for reference. I loved it, but I just didn't get a photo of it. The next thing that I got was a name sign for Charlie that was like Mickey Mouse themed and we just put it on the bar. It was kind of like a staple decor piece. I just found this on Etsy. It was one of the things that I just randomly came across. Again, I'll link it all below. I just had to give her the name that I wanted to go on the sign and then I believe I told her when the party was so she knew when to get it to me. But everything that I got off Etsy came very quickly. I didn't have any issues with anything that I bought from all the different shops. I love it. I think it's the cutest little thing. I thought it was a fun little touch to add to the theme of the party. These next few items aren't like staple pieces. You don't need them. We just thought it was kind of fun and Charlie is obsessed with them. You can go to Target and or Walmart and there's a little stuffed animal. There's a Mickey Mouse, a Minnie, a Donald, a Daisy, a Pluto, a Goofy, all the main characters. And we just got those and kind of set them around the party just for fun. While I was at Walmart, I came across this pack of two all black Mickey Mouse head balloons and we got those and we just blew those up with helium and then just put those around the party as well. Okay, here we go. Take three. Third time is the charm. Hopefully it is hours later. Um, you're probably gonna hear rain in the background. My daughter woke up from her nap. My camera died for a second time and we had a torrential downpour. Hello, welcome to Florida. So we're gonna try this one more time because I have someone that's inside watching Charlie right now and my camera is currently fully charged. But if you hear thunder in the background, I'm sorry. That that I can't control. So because I thought the invitation cards looked really cute, I actually ended up buying three separate all black picture frames. I got these from the dollar store, very inexpensive. I just really liked the way the invitation card turned out and I wanted to put that in a picture frame and put it on display at the party, so I did that. And then I also printed out two other signs. One said, we've got ears, say cheers, and the other one said, we've got beers, say cheers. So the we've got ears ones goes along with the next decor piece that I'm gonna share with you guys. I actually bought Mickey and Minnie ears off of Amazon. I bought two 12 packs. So one 12 pack had six mini ears and six Mickey ears. I just put those on display so when people came they could wear them if they want. And then if they wanted to take them home with them at the end of the party they could. I put the mini ear sign that we've got ears say cheers in the picture frame and I just set that on the counter where the ears were. And then the we've got beer say cheers. I just wanted to put that up when I thought it was kind of cute and creative. But two we have a bar that I used as like a backdrop for the party. And I just wanted the other adults to know that it was okay to bring beer or drink beer if they wanted to. We didn't supply any alcohol, but I just wanted other people to know that if they wanted to sip on a beer or two, like, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't bother me at all. So another thing that I found on Etsy was Charlie's outfit that she wore for the party. As you can tell in the picture, it was an all black shirt and then it had a red overall skirt with like white polka dots on it. That I got from one store off of Etsy and then a completely separate store, I actually found little mini hair clips and I just put her hair in little buns and put those in. It was the cutest thing ever. I hear that thunder in the background. 
onto the cake. I absolutely love how Charlie's cake turned out. Last year, I went with a very simple type of cake. This year, I was actually gonna go with the same woman that did my cake last year. Long story short, my stepmom knew someone. One of their family members goes to our church, Miss Angie with Fancy Cakes, and absolutely loved her. She had posted a similar mini cake to the one that I got from her on her Facebook. Saw it, fell in love with it, reached out to her, and I made a few changes to mine, but she hit the nail on the head. She outdid herself on this cake. I am in love with it. It was a showstopper. Everybody at the party loved it. It was so yummy. Oh my gosh, this cake was divine. So I'm gonna tell you every little detail that I gave her. So if you are in the McClenny Lake City area of Florida, I would highly recommend reaching out to Miss Angie at Fancy Cake. So I'm gonna read you guys exactly what I sent to Miss Angie in case y'all are wanting this exact same cake. Like I stated earlier, I saw a picture that she posted of a Minnie Mouse cake that she did. I'll put that right here for you guys so you can see what I was using as reference. So this next part that I'm gonna be sending to her, I'm referring to this photo and I'm just making changes that I want done so my cake is similar to this one but a little different. So the type of cake that I got is a three layer, eight inch round lemon blueberry cake with lemon cream cheese frosting decorated with Minnie Mouse theme with red, black, yellow fondant colors as per client's instructions below. So again, referring to this photo right here, I said I was thinking doing the Mickey head all black, the bow red with white dots, the top of the cake and the part of the icing that drips down also do all black. At the base of the Mickey head, outline the bottom with a gold line just to break up the black so there is a little bit of dimension. Leave the rest of the cake white like you have it, then do some of the flowers red and some gold. The center of the cake where you have the hint of pink, change that to red and then do red and gold at the bottom where you have pink. And this is how our cake turned out. I love our birthday cake. It was so good. Yeah, that's the cake. She gave me a ton of different options for the flavor that I could do for the cake. And I just chose lemon and blueberry. I had no idea if that was going to taste good and like go together. We were both kind of like, I don't know how it's going to taste, but I'll do it for you kind of thing. And I think it turned out really good. It was so yummy, you guys. Another little decor piece that I got is confetti. It was two separate Etsy accounts that had Mickey Mouse themed confetti. One of them had different color Mickey Mouse heads that were like sparkly and they were just like red, black, and gold. And the other one, I was actually able to input Charlie's name into the confetti, and then it had a bunch of different like Mickey Mouse parts in it. So there was like a Mickey Mouse hand, and like Mickey Mouse bottoms, and like a Mickey Mouse head, and then her name. And then we sprinkled them along like the table that we put the food out at, and then like where we had the cake. I just wanted to give it a little extra pizzazz. Next up, we have gift bags. This year, I went a little more all out for the gift bags. I was looking on Etsy, found a ton of really cute gift bags on there that were Mickey Mouse themed, but they all were actually pretty pricey and I just did not feel like spending $30, $40 on bags that were gonna most likely get thrown away. I luckily just went on Amazon and I found a huge, I think it was like a 24 pack of these gift bags and I got these and just filled them up. I will say last year, I made the mistake of going to the dollar store and trying to buy all of the gift bag items there. I thought it would be cheaper that way, just go grab a bunch of different ones. No, 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 no. I stumbled upon the aisle in Walmart that is like the birthday aisle and in said aisle, there were tons of cheap little toys. Oh, y'all hear the rain picking up, I'm so sorry. But there was a ton of cheap little toys that came in packs. So you have like an eight pack, a 20 pack, and I just got a bunch of different little items that I was able to put into the gift bag. So here I'll show you guys how I laid everything out when I was putting the bags together. For the little boys, I did a bouncy ball, some Play-Doh, and like some little boy sunglasses. And then for the little girls, I did the same thing. I did like a bouncy ball, some Play-Doh or slime, and then I did little girl sunglasses, and then I also had like those little print princess rings and I just put those in a gift bag and called it a day and then the sign that I put next to the gift bag I actually found that on Etsy I just stumbled across it I was not expecting to buy it it just said like thanks for stopping by it's what Mickey says at the end of every episode and I just thought it was cute to put that with the gift bags because people were going to be leaving and they'd see it on their way out it's just like a little sign like this big I just sat it on a table next to where the gift bags were all the little details made this party and I had so many compliments on it now we'll move 
move on to the food. I had decor items for the food. I'll explain that in just a second, but I wanted to lump all of the food stuff together so I didn't confuse you. I found these PDF files of like condiments and it had Mickey and Donald and Goofy on it. And I'll put them right here for you guys so y'all can see what I'm talking about. But I just paid a couple dollars, purchased these PDF files. I printed them out and I bought lamination paper off of Amazon for a couple bucks. I laminated these myself and then I just stuck them onto the condiments and I just thought it was the cutest little touch. It's just little things like that. It's all about the details, guys. All of the utensils I got in large sums from Walmart. So I got red napkins and gold napkins and then I got red silverware and gold silverware. I used to bartend at a golf course many, many eons ago and we would always wrap the silver up really nice. So I just thought it would be a cute touch for me to wrap the silverware how we used to. So yeah, I just took red silverware and a gold napkin and wrapped those together and then just tied it with a little bit of the extra string that I bought to tie on the balloons. I just alternated silverware color and napkin color and then I just laid those out on a big platter next to the food so everybody can just grab the silverware as they wanted. And then I bought all black plates. I don't know why, I just wanted that aesthetic look. And since we're talking about the silverware and the plates and all that, I'll just go ahead and explain what I did for the food and the silverware. So if you watched, again, my video from last year, I named all of the foods different things that went along with the party theme. And I did that exact same thing again this year. And all of the labels, I made those myself. So for the silverware, I just called those mouse tools. And then of course, if you're gonna have a Mickey Mouse themed party, you have to do hot dogs. That was our like main dish. We did hot dogs and we called them hot diggity dogs. I just set out a little hot dog station. So I put all of the buns on this cute little tray that we had. And I had the hot dogs right beside that. And along with the condiments, my daughter's birthday is in June and we currently live in Florida. So it was in the 90s on the day of her party. Very, very, very hot. So I knew that I wanted to have something to like cool the kids down. So I did a popsicle station and I just called those Pluto's popsicles. And I basically just took a really large black bucket, filled it with ice and then just stuck all of the popsicles inside of it. So the popsicles were sticking up like this. And then we used these really cute little containers and I just put a bunch of mixed fruit inside of them and we called those minis mixed fruit. My uncle Rick made buffalo dip that was like a requirement I made him make his buffalo dip because it's so good and we just called that chip and Dell's chips and dip so we had chips and then the buffalo dip right there and then we had a couple other dip options as well and then for beverages we did sweet and unsweet tea and we also made a little contraption and called it Pete's punch and what we did was we used Hawaiian punch and sprite and we mixed them together and it was so stinking yummy you guys and then we did goofy's goldfish and I lucked out with these because the night before the party, we went to the store to go buy the food for the party and there was Mickey themed goldfish at Walmart. Literally ham. I was not planning that. I made what I called clubhouse sandwiches and it was just ham and cheese sandwiches and I bought a cookie cutter off of Amazon and I cut up all of the sandwiches into little Mickey heads and we put those on a little platter for everybody. I saw this really cute idea off of Pinterest and it was Rice Krispie treats that were again cut up in Mickey heads so I just used that same cookie cutter but we dyed them red and black and then I left some just like the regular color and then we called those Donald's dyed Rice Krispie treats and then underneath of the rice krispie treats i cut up watermelon and again i cut those into mickey heads as well and just also put those on a tray and then the drinks like i said yeah i just had sweet and unsweet tea i had water i had pete's punch and then i also had some apple juice containers for the kids to just grab out of the cooler if they were thirsty at the drink station i went and i bought several cases of mason jars and i just put out a bunch of mason jars near the drink setup that we had and i purchased some red and white polka dot straws and then some black and white polka dot straws and I just set those out on display so when people were ready to have a drink they could grab their mason jar fill it with ice fill it up with their sweet tea flop a straw in there and be good to go I don't know why I feel like I'm forgetting something this always happens every time I decide to film something goes wrong whether it's the weather not cooperating my camera not cooperating my child not cooperating it's always something the neighbors and their animals not cooperating. Your girl just can't catch a break. I think that is everything. We have finally made it to the end of today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because it really helps support my channel and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.